I'm Yuri, I'm Jacob, and we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty three Ferrari two nine six GTB with launch control, but we were told not to use it. Oh my! It's fast enough without it. Horsepower and torque. A combined eight hundred nineteen horsepower and five hundred forty six pound feet of torque from a twin turbo three liter V six hybrid. And if you were to use launch control, it's under three seconds, right? Uh, yeah, zero to sixty. This thing is wickedly fast. Yuri, play me the sound of 8,500 RPM. <laughs> did you even hit 85? I think I did. <laughs> this thing is so fast, it feels like that uh, Ferrari F12 that we drove, like the, the sensation of speed, but it's got a different sound because this is a six cylinder. Yes, and it's actually a really unique sound. Ferrari really wanted this to sound like a V12. So this actually got the nickname of Piccolo V12, aka Baby V12. So it actually has equal length exhaust manifolds and a symmetrical firing order. So it actually sounds really good. And this is probably my favorite sounding V6 ever. Yeah, and it's got a hot pipe that uh, sends it into the inside so you can hear it better. I definitely think it sounds better from the inside than it does from the outside. So let's take a listen from the outside. Yeah, it sounds like really nice in here. It really does. You get turbo whooshes, you get uh, actual V6 sounds. It's a very smooth sound. And man, driving through these like Malibu Canyon roads, it just feels like cheating. Yes, and this is part of our California True Car trip. So if you're shopping for a Ferrari, go to tsp.truecar.com. They have plenty of used Ferraris, especially within 100 miles of California, where we are. Do you know which used Ferrari I'm looking for in the future sometime? What is it, like a 348 or something? 348 or Testarossa. Oh, okay. Yeah, which, Testarossa would be sick. Whichever one comes first. I would honestly, not even going back that far, I would love the F12 that we drove. I was in love with that thing. I just, I just want to own a manual red mid-rear engine Ferrari for a little bit. And uh, this is a red mid-rear engine Ferrari, so I am so stoked. I feel like so cool driving this around California. Yeah, I get that. And unfortunately for you, because I know you want like a beige interior, but this spec works really well. I just want tan interior on an older one. Newer Sorry, ones, tan, yes. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, okay. Because this works really well. This black? Yeah, I like the red act. This is, again, Jacob spec, red, black, red stitching, and carbon fiber. It's like all these manufacturers knew. <laughs> Watch our upcoming videos from the California trip as well. And then another cool thing about this Ferrari is we can go full electric mode. Dead quiet. Yeah, and I think you can go up to like 120 kilometers an hour. You can drive up to 25 kilometers on pure EV or 15 miles. And this is plug-in hybrid, like you can actually plug in or regen while driving. Yeah, so you would actually get green plates if we were back home in Ontario. All right, so I'm gonna take it easy for a little bit in this mode. I wanna talk okay. about the looks and the styling for a bit. Oh dude, this thing is gorgeous. There are a bunch of like new Ferraris. There's the F8, there's the SF90. Yeah, the SF90 is like the top. There's one that's front engine, I kind of forget the name of that. And then there's some special ones, the Daytona. The Daytona is obviously- Yeah, that's crazy. That is so cool looking, but I love, love, love the looks of this. And then since we have the normal version, we don't have the race version, we don't have the option to get that cool stripe kit. Yeah, there is like a race package for this car. Which gets rid of the adjustable dampers, which gets rid of the nose lift, and the nose lift has come in super handy in California. It's been critical here, and we also have bumpy road mode, which makes the dampers perfect for these California roads. So let's put it into gas mode. You can put it into hybrid. Hybrid mode. There you, you click, go. Click the red button, it goes to bumpy road mode. So we have a Manitino, which is kind of your drive mode selector for your sport race modes, and then we also have the E-Manitino, which is actually a touchscreen for more race modes. Okay, back to styling. Headlights look cool, nice uh, chill lines, and the back, it's chill lines too on the taillights. Whoa, whoa, more about the headlights though. We're going back and forth. Okay, okay, headlights. We actually have scoops below the DRLs 
which are actually brake ducts to cool the brakes it's, in the front bumper. Well, would you not expect that here? No, I mean, it's just so cool. I've never seen that before. And what's cool is when you pop the hood, there's a ton of room there as well. Because this is- Frunk. Frunk, because this is rear wheel drive only, so you don't have an electric motor up at the front. The electric motor is between the transmission and the engine. Yes, it's like uh, MGUK Formula One tech, obviously, Ferrari Formula One. Hey, they got a team there, right? They do. <laughs> And when it comes to the body lines, they look really great. I like this red paint. It's not like flat Ferrari red paint, but there's so many different colors you can get through the configurator. Yeah, this paint is called Rosso Imola. So it's not like Ferrari bright red, which I think is like Rosso Corsa or something like that. It looks stunning in the sun, perfectly filmed by us in these beautiful Malibu canyons. I love the big Ferrari badges on the sides. I love the Ferrari logo on the back. When you open the door, you get Ferrari against carbon fiber sills. It's all so sick. Yeah, and then the engine cover is a full glass cover, and then you can see all the hybridization with the orange cables. That glass cover is, I was not expecting that. That no. is so cool. And it's like rounded, it looks amazing. And then we got a cool little like spoiler up there too that's very hard to see. Yeah, it channels air over that glass panel. And the look through my rearview mirror is very clear. Like it's overall just a very easy, pleasant experience while driving it and getting in. Now the doors don't go up. Yeah. But it's still sick. We'll, we'll get into the supercar checklist later, but uh, it's a supercar. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I like the looks of this. I think it's a totally awesome looking Ferrari for not being the most expensive Ferrari in the lineup. Right, and then these wheels are sick as heck too. Like they're just standard five spokes with a little, yeah, a little bit of a twist. twist. Yeah, yeah, and what would be the Continental recommended tire for a Ferrari 296 GTB? The Continental Extreme Contact Sport 02. All right, your turn to drive through these fun roads. Ooh, Canyon Send. Race mode, qualifying mode, floor it. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fast. It feels so good too. What a great launch. It hooked right up too. Oh my goodness. Okay, first thing that I saw was these flashing LEDs on my steering wheel for shift lights. If you don't option that on a Ferrari, you have missed the mark. That yeah, is perfect. You, you definitely need that. And then I was gonna look at the screen in front of the passenger seat that has display stuff for performance, but I, I was just watching guys. <laughs> I was too scared. And the next amazing thing, these paddle shifters, full carbon, and they're column mounted, which I'm getting used to because they're so big, I've had no issues with them. I have no issues with column mounted ever because whatever car they're on, it's like an exotic fun car and it just makes the experience different. Yeah, and then this steering wheel is the perfect girthiness. Like, it's actually pretty thin. And then the turn and response because of that is also amazing. Like, I just, I love how this thing handles through these canyons. So Yuri, I'm going to make you slightly uncomfortable, but not too much. I'll take it easy. But man, this thing handles out here like crazy. These, this is Mulholland, by the way. Yeah, I give it a, a less of a send because like, I don't want to send too hard. Yeah, but I'm in qualifying mode, so you know, you are draining all, here. Draining all your battery. <laughs> it's not regening at all. Oh my goodness, this thing handles so well. So it is only rear wheel drive, but I have full confidence in this thing. It feels so nimble, like, and it does let you not automatically upshift when you're in manual with our little shifter down here. How do you like this little shifter down here? It's all right, I mean, it makes sense, it looks cool. Yeah, but man, driving this thing, it's just so nimble. If it's, it's just it's so, it is very, very nimble. It feels a lot lighter than I'm sure it is because it's a hybrid. So not that the battery's that big, it is a plug-in hybrid and you can drive on full electric, which is really cool. So the battery has to be big enough to be able to do that. The nimbleness reminds me of the nimbleness of the GT3. Yes. That we weren't expecting until we started driving it. Yeah, we didn't know what to Look. expect driving Porsche. Whoa, that's a lot of turning. Yeah, this, this is incredible though. And this eight speed dual clutch responds really quickly. Like, upshifts, downshifts, no matter what. Again, qualifying mode, which makes sense, but it, I don't feel like it doesn't really shift any slower in any of the modes. It's just, if I was to drop this into hybrid right now and then drop the Manitino into sport here, do the same thing. It's still just as fast. Yeah. And it's not harsh by any means. Like this is an amazing powertrain. Ferrari knocked it out of the park for a plug-in hybrid. This might be my favorite plug-in hybrid that I've driven actually, now that I think about it. Well, we haven't driven the E-Ray. We just got ride-alongs in it. Yeah. And that wasn't a plug-in, I guess. Yeah, but I mean this, from sitting from the passenger seat in both vehicles, this is so much faster. Yeah, it's also like so much faster. More too. It's yeah. a Ferrari compared to a Corvette. And I'm okay with this V6 sound, as I said. I love V8s, but this is my favorite V8 sound. How, or V6 sound, sorry. But right now, we have no sound. That's why it threw me off. 
So in terms of the e-Manitino modes, we have e-drive, hybrid, performance, and qualify. So each one changes what the battery does, what the regen does, and then our actual physical one changes kind of the traction control mostly, and then the throttle input. And the system's pretty easy to use, even though it is capacitive touch buttons and screens on the steering wheel. It's, I guess, their way to build it all in with the Apple CarPlay in the gauge cluster with the full digital gauge, because there's no infotainment, and because of that, I think it has like a, a better look than most other supercars. And maybe it's a little more difficult to use, but like I can change the radio stations from this little screen on the passenger side and change the volume and everything. Yeah, and we can also change the radio stations with these little buttons behind the, the steering wheel and the volume as well. And then even when you've got your Apple CarPlay up, once you get your directions, if you just hold the home button, it'll go back to the normal gauge screen. And we've got a button to change it to different gauge cluster modes. So if you're using the onboard navigation, then it's no problem at all because you still have cool tacks and everything. Yeah, and you can also change the color of the tack. We've customized it to yellow because it's, it's just fitting for this Yellow car. is a fun color for a gauge cluster. And I've seen it in other Ferraris and it just kind of makes sense in yellow. And then we got capacitive touch climate. And then we also start this car with a capacitive touch button. Honestly, I wish that was like a toggle switch, like a flip switch, like a physical thing would be nice, but I get why they wanted to make everything because they really wanted to make this different and like show the future of Ferrari, which again, makes sense. Yeah, and once you get used to it, it's fine. And it, I'm, I like that there's no infotainment. Yes. It's the, cool. It's interesting and it's totally different from what most manufacturers are doing. And since this is supercar stuff, this isn't like a Civic. Yeah. There's no reason for us to complain about it. Right, we should probably get to the supercar checklist, theory. Is there a lot of carbon? Uh, heck yeah, carbon fiber everywhere on the outside and on the inside. Yeah, they got a lot of options and you can see that plaque on the inside of the front where there's even more carbon. Does it pass the cup holder test? Ooh. Honestly, yeah, it's got a nice cup holder, so that, one of them. That's a fail. That's a supercar fail. Visors, three, two, one. Fail, so fail. that's a supercar pass. But they do flip out, which a lot of supercars don't even do that. Do we have a gimmicky steering wheel? Very gimmicky. Our turn signals are on the steering wheel. We have LED lights for the shift lights. We start the car with a capacitive touch button and we have a Manitino and an E-Manitino. Yeah, yeah, so yes. that's supercar pass. Supercar pass for sure. Do you look cool getting in and out? Uh, yeah, it's a Ferrari. And a red Ferrari with the engine at the back. Do the doors go up? No. Supercar fail, but that's okay here. Is it fast and is it loud? Let's find out. Uh, yes, it's fast. Not that loud though, yeah, but it still sounds good. It sounds good, could be louder. Yeah. So pass, like pretty much pass. Yeah, and I mean, it kind of gets bonus points in today's age for the fact that you can actually put it into full hybrid. So I think going forward, we should add can it also go dead silent into the future? Yeah, if full electric mode is a supercar. Considering like hybrids are assisting for speed, I like that part of hybrid uh, supercars. Yeah, okay, so this is definitely a supercar and we definitely like the hybrid system in it. Yes, so great job Ferrari. This is 100% a supercar, not that we had any doubts. You know what else we should add? Does it have a cool key? Because this has an awesome Ferrari key and it sits right here Let me just in take it middle. out of my pocket right now, live. Boom. Oh. You do it because I'm driving. This way. It's there. got it's got yeah, it's tucked in. Nicely. That looks oh man. Good to see the logo now. And then a couple other things on the interior. For more storage, we have a net back here, which is nice. Yeah. Because some of these cars have like no room for anything. And then you know I can fit my fanny pack here on the edge. We got a little compartment there. To open the doors, it's just a button. And we got our window controls in the middle. Yeah. Just like a Jeep. Man, I just yeah. <laughs> I just can't get over how well this responds. Like it's instant. The the turn in response is amazing on this. It's there's nothing weird about it. I, it's very, everything about this car is fast and pleasant. Yeah, like driving it down the PCH in traffic, I was able to just silently crawl along in traffic, not bothering anybody, enjoying my music in here. It's lovely. Where if you had a naturally aspirated V10, it might get a little buzzy. Yes, although, although naturally yeah, aspirated V10 yeah, yeah, yeah. Naturally is aspirated everything is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Ferrari V12 from the F12. <laughs> DSP.TrueCar.com, you find naturally aspirated there. Exactly. And tunnel send, another supercar check. It's just so smooth. Yeah, less, less loud obnoxiousness, more smoothness. I feel like by rolling down the window just a touch, it almost made it quieter. <laughs> you, I get like NSX vibes from like the whole like it's, it can be loud, but it's a different style of loud, not just like V12, V10. Right, okay, so let's do another little tunnel send, but window up. See, I don't know. 
This is just smooth sounding. It's the it's future sounding. Yeah, but I just I love that we have a V6 twin turbo that can rev out to 8,500 with a hybrid assist, and the actual twin turbo V6 makes a ton of power. So that hybrid is even adding a little bit more. Well, actually, considerable more. I think it's around 200 horsepower. Well, I definitely didn't feel any lag at any no. point at all. And that's the thing. It's like yes, this is fast. You don't feel any lag, and you can hear the turbos like spooling. But while the turbo is spooling, you're already getting that hybrid assist. Okay. Some things we forgot, back into the interior. Yes. Are the seats comfy? Very comfy. Like, very, very comfy. Yeah. No problem. I like the look of them. It's got like, it's not my style of seat, but I do like the way they look. Oh, you want like race buckets in here? No, no, I meant like the, the stitching and, <laughs> yeah. and stuff. I did go in the configurator and you get like, like wild colors for yeah. seats too, but. But then we also have awesome 296 GTB floor mats. And by the way, the name 296 GTB, 296 is the displacement, 2.99 liters. The six is the amount of cylinders and GT is Grand Touring and Berlinetta is the B. Where I guess if you got the convertible, the Spider would be GTS. Yes, so yeah, it's a 2.991 liter. I know I said three liter earlier, that is just rounded up because basically it's a three liter. But it, it might, doesn't sound as cool. It might, it, it might, yeah, if it was a 306 or maybe they're like, just do you think they built it down because they like the name 296? I'm not really sure, but 296 sounds good. And then back to the floor mats, if you personally own a 4A8 Pista, you can get a set of Tuxmat at tuxmat.com slash the straight pipes. Check out what they have available for your vehicles. For your non-Ferrari. Yes, they have plenty of other mats. So we had previously driven the Ferrari Roma. We weren't in love with it. Yuri, are you in love with this? This is a mid-engine red Ferrari, and I know how much you wanted to try one of these. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is exactly what I thought life would be like in a mid-engine red Ferrari. Like a Ferrari is this. Yes, and I got to experience it, and I, I love every minute. It was everything that I thought it would be, and now my next goal is to go test drive a bunch of older Ferraris to find which one I want to drive slash buy if I can save up enough money in real life when the prices drop a bit. <laughs> I love how different this is from every other supercar that I've driven, and I think they just did such a good job of modernizing a V6 that they don't really use because it's mostly V8s and V12, so I think they did a really good job with this car. Great, great job, Ferrari. I know I've said that like 15 times in this video. Before we get to the price, can we electric send the tunnel? Okay, uh, here we go. We're gonna go E-Drive. Full floor it, E-Drive send. Okay, full electric. My foot's down. This is pretty quick. <laughs> Dude, we are flying. Yeah, tunnels are better in the... Uh... Full race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> oh. nice to have that option. All right, with everything out of the way, I think it's time we get to the price. This one is sitting at $444,287. American. And I think that's a reasonable amount of money for what they're asking for because there's a lot going on here. If I was to spec one out, I would be totally fine with not going like full carbon everywhere. And, and I know the SF90 is above this and obviously it's going to be even more expensive, but how much faster and better can it get? Well, that's what I'm like. I can't get close to any of this stuff. Like, this is like the second supercar that I've driven through like nonstop curvy roads. Yeah, like canyon sending. And not like Ontario, like cliche corner, like couple turns send and then straight away send. Yes. So for me, it's a different world. And for me, it's more than enough. Yeah, this is a great car. 15 times. Let me know, count in the bottom of the video how much I said great car. But I, I'd, I'd take the Daytona. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's fair. Let us know what you think of our California car reviews. Which roads should we drive on next? Leave a comment below. And big shout out for True Car for hosting us here. Thank you guys so much for watching because we're enjoying our time. Wow, look at that ocean. Unbelievable. Every time we come down here, it's the yeah. same. <laughs> it never gets boring. Never, not, never in Ontario, you turn out to the gardener. Wow, look at that sea and town. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But here. Wow. <laughs>